Ghost Cult Magazine welcomes in Brian of Red Fang. How are you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm hanging in there, all things considering. Uh, I'm hopefully optimistic that the world is opening up and getting brighter. I hope you're well. I hope your family, the band, your associated peoples are all okay. Hey, back at you, man. Word. It's been a crazy time. I know you guys are busy making a record, but you normally are on the road a lot. So I was wondering right off the bat if this has kind of been the longest period of time for you guys, kind of collectively without shows. Uh, without a question, yes. It's um, We have a tour, a U.S. tour booked uh, from oct mid-October to mid-November, U.S. And uh, that'll be, I don't know, a year and a half since we'd played a show. So. Um, too damn long, man. It's ridiculous. Time to shake off the rust. Um, I feel exactly. like I feel hopefully like there's hopefully there's some uh, there's some uh, metal left under there. <laughs> like, oh, we've shaken the rust off. That was all there was. Crap. Nice. Well said. Well said. I, no, I mean, judging by this new record, I'm sure you guys are going to crush it. Um, but it is kind of it's definitely going to be weird. And like I said, I, I do feel like I'm stoked to see all these things get booked. And I hope they all happen. I'm, I'm, I like. I feel like these these festivals that are all getting announced are insane. They're so full of bands. Yeah, man. You know uh, that was one of the you know things we have talked about. Um, you know this this year anyway. You know we're obviously like everyone else chomping at the bit to you know get out on the road and um, you know typically you are trying to put together a tour and you'll be like second hold or third hold on a venue, and now it's like. 15th hold 17th hold so it's just like oh man you know it's like the rock and roll garden hose has been uh un unfolded and uh and there's just a glut of, of bands out there just trying to you know to to get back at it and so it's like what do you you know so do you do you get in the fight and you know and struggle and try to you know and maybe not play the, the ideal venue but you just get out there or do you wait for the, you know, wait for the tidal wave of initial tidal wave of bands and then get back when when things are kind of, you know, the, the, the regular way things are. So I don't, I don't know. Um, I think we're waiting. I think waiting till October. Um, I'd rather be touring this summer. Um, like you're saying, it seems like things are opening up and um, I feel like it could be done. But I feel like, um, you know, the, we're, the event I've seen, you know, the proposed routing and the and the venues we're playing are, are cool and so it's like oh, okay well at least you know our routing looks good it's not like we're playing you know the basement of joe's crab shack shack or something you know what i mean it's like we're playing you know venues that we like so or, and some new ones that you know that i that i've heard of and i'm excited to play so so hopefully we're doing the right thing nice i hope so too joe's crab shack i think is a place in the Boston area, that is an actual real place. But anyway, um, <laughs> do they have do they have bands? There was a place in the town I used to live in when I lived in Boston back in the day that had bands. It was like a little hybrid bar, music venue, and seafood place because it was on the water in the South Shore of Boston. So hilarious. Anyway, uh, I think I saw a Rush tribute band there, and they were awful. Um, <laughs> ah, what were they called? I always I always loved uh, cover bands. Names I do too. Yeah, I. I want to say they were like moving pictures or something, not creative. Uh, yeah. But I love okay. I love cover bands. I've been in cover bands, so um, yeah, man. And also, good. how how do you how do you land on cover band versus tribute band, and what's uh, the difference to you? Yes. So personally, I think a cover band could be any band doing covers, not necessarily trying to give you the show, the spectacle. Right. I was in a Pink Floyd tribute band. We didn't look like Pink Floyd. We didn't have pigs. We didn't have a wall. We didn't have special. Light. We had pretty good lighting. But what we did was we tried to faithfully recreate the music. So if we did Dark Side of the Moon, we did it with all the extra musical stuff we had a backup singer we did it like saxophone player we tried hard to okay honor so the music is so so is it the extra effort that makes it a tribute band yes i think it okay is. all right <laughs> uh, if you if you did your homework tribute if it's if you're just trying to make a buck and get some free beers it's a cover band exactly and i also and there are plenty of bands that actually go the extra mile and put on the kiss costumes and put on the bg's fringe bell-bottom pants and all that stuff so there are bands that do that <laughs> yeah uh, but but they can still just be cover bands yeah of course yeah well, anyway <laughs> did, did, red, did red fang start out as a cover band uh not that i recall uh we've done some covers uh no um we're a tribute to our own songs i guess we there it is 
we would just yeah. send up send up tributes to our own songs. <laughs> See That's who all cares. I- yeah, well, yeah. I'm gonna. I'll tell you what that that kind of sparks my segue to talk about arrows coming out on Relapse Records, which I'm super stoked for. I've been jamming it out. It is super heavy, and I feel like, in a funny way, I think the expectations here are going to be super subverted. Like, I think people have an idea of what Red Fang is to them, and the hits, air quotes, of Red Fang, the popular songs, the videos, and the fun stuff you guys do. And this record is a, not a complete. It's not a departure, but it's definitely a you need to pay attention to this record. It's not going to just go by you. Uh, yeah, hopefully that's hopefully that's a good thing. Hopefully we're not, hopefully it's not like, oh damn it, I got to listen to this Red Bank record. <laughs> no, know? not at all. Um, man. It's never it's a, a chore. It's a little more probably yeah, a little a little more melodramatic than maybe some of our previous records, but um, but I you know I think it's it's more about uh, creating a mood and it's and and yeah, I don't think it's difficult listening. Um, but it is a little more, a little more, um, yeah, a little more, a little more melancholic, a little more moody, you know, but, uh, but I dig it, man. It's, you know, uh, uh, so there was a lot of shit to be sad about over the past year. So it's like, all right, a little bit is sad in your, in your, uh, awesome pie is okay. <laughs> indeed, indeed. It goes in the sauce. Uh, I don't know if it was uh, bringing funk back in to work on it with you guys, but I felt it really reminded me of the earliest Red Fang stuff. It's very sludgy. I felt like some Melvins in there, just very, oh, not not doom slow, but like a lot more weight, just like you just said a little bit. But I, th- I wonder if that had to do with funk coming back in too. Uh, well, we came into the studio pretty darn prepared this time. So um, the material was already, uh, you know, 90% there when we went into the studio. Um, but it is that 10%, I think, that uh, kind of, kind of, uh, tilted it towards you know haunted house and uh and i you know i dig it i mean that's kind of my thing i mean you know i mean if if i was you know king of the band it'd probably be some you know we'd all probably be you know uh, wearing all black and standing in the rain so you know uh it, it makes me happy but you know i understand that not everybody you know enjoys their favorite song while contemplating suicide so you know it's it's a uh, it's not it's not all doom and gloom let's just say that no, not at all. You guys have been very, you know, jovial dudes. Every time I've seen you, we've always had a laugh and a good time. And uh, all, overall, the music is very, uh, you know, you always got like some uplifting parts and some happy riffs and stuff and some good choruses, some sing along, shout along stuff that I love. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a heavy record, man. It's heavy. Right on. Well, I, I appreciate that. Word. And also, I really love, there's a, a lot of cool stuff on repeated listens. I caught like string sections. I know there's some some odd keyboardy synth stuff in there in places like very subtle musical stuff that if you don't catch it carefully, you're going to miss it. Uh, yeah. You know, we, uh, uh, I think funk is the one who, um, you know, who basically we were just talking about that kind of layering of a song and he's like, well, you've got to, you know, you've got to have something for the, for the tokers, you know? So it's like, there's shit for the tokers for sure. man. you know, you get a, you get one one toke over the line, and man, you you could be in there for a while. Lost in the bong cloud, uh, for real. Yeah, too exactly. too high, and uh, anodyne is like a very classic sounding red fang track to me. And I love Fonzie scheme, not just the name, but everything with the lyrics, the song. That's my favorite track so far. Do you have a favorite so far? Uh, no, I, you know I I kind of think of the record as a whole, so I I think I some songs I like. Um, more so because of where they're sitting in the record than maybe even as a standalone. You know, I mean, we're very much of the camp that, you know, you put out an album and it is, an, you know, it's a 42, three minute experience. Um, and I know that, <clears throat> you know, the way the, the world now it's streaming and bite sized and that kind of thing. And I think the songs stand alone that way. But, uh, you know, if we could just take one step back and say, I'm going to listen to that record. I know that's crazy because, you know, you got your TikToks and your whatnots, you know, but just listen to the damn record, people. <laughs> right on. I'm a big fan of albums and the album experience. So when I go to listen to something or when I get my 
my vinyl ship to be, I'm going to shut off everything, turn off the phone and just listen to the record in a sitting. That's what I like to do. I feel like that's a little bit of a lost art. Bands don't make complete, full, great albums anymore. And uh, and I think the same thing, I, uh, I'm i sure I sound like a broken record to our listeners and viewers. I say often, I think sequencing is kind of a lost art a little bit too. What do you think about that? I agree. And, I, and I'm terrible at it. Um... <laughs> Uh, you know, we have discussions about it and I'm, I'm, I, you know, basically what I do is I listen to other people's sequences and see what works for me. But um, it's really hard for me to see, to see the complete picture where I think um, Aaron specifically, you know, is very meticulous that way. And I, and, I, you know, I want to say that he and David probably were the, were the people really, um, really tweaking on the, on the sequence. And I think it works really, really well, you know. I mean, there's some there's some moments on the album where I think if you had one go into the other, you'd be really sad if it was on shuffle, you know. So, you know, there's there's these segues. Like you're saying, there's some keyboard stuff, um, some weird ass synth stuff that, you know, one thing bleeds into the next. And it just and it and it's really it's really nice. And I think that not having that continuity, um, you know, it's it's one tiny tier. It's not a big deal, but uh, but I. Um, but, I, you know, I like it. Yes. Short answer. I totally think that sequence is important. Right on. Right on. And uh, yeah, man, I, I just think it's odd that uh, we live in a time where things are, uh, you know, not as valued as they used to be. I'm sure like me, you grew up in the album age and you only could hear the out. Maybe you heard a single, two singles. There was no MTV. There was no videos. There was none of this no social media. And I think it was a little, you know, I, I don't want to sound like a, a get off my lawn kind of guy because I'm starting to come off that way. But I do kind of miss the the mystery of like, I love this band that I'm buying this album no matter what. And I'm not going to hear anything beforehand and just go get the record and listen to it. Yeah, man, I, I'm uh, the same way. I, you know, sometimes if there's a movie I'm really excited about. I will consciously avoid trailers or any kind of spoilers. One of my favorite things, if there's a director or something that I appreciate, um, if I can turn the blinders off completely and not even know what the premise of the movie is, just knowing that I like, you know, the, the actors or the writer or something, then um, that's kind of my favorite thing. Very rarely happens because, you know, movies, you know, big movies, whatever, there's the press machine, make sure you know what's going on beforehand. But uh, that's pretty exciting when you're like, ah, is this like Kramer versus Kramer? Or is it Kramer versus Kramer versus Godzilla. I don't know. Wow, that's a movie I didn't know I needed in my life, but now I think I do. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's it's heartfelt and uh, really gory. There you go. Uh, and and Dustin Hoffman would just make like uh, strange asides the whole movie. <laughs> yeah, and that and that he was willing to wear that uh, Godzilla suit for that whole time is incredible. Right on. Uh, you know, it, it's it is kind of interesting. You are you guys are a band. I always I always wondered why the movie industry will let out a trailer or two and not, you know, people don't get to see the whole movie before you can go pay to go see it. And the music industry really kind of, I think, you know, irrespective of streaming or whatever, I'm not trying to be controversial or put you on the spot, but it is odd that like, you know, even Red Fang is a successful band. You guys will put out three, four singles out of a 12, 13 song record. Uh, it's still the majority of the record is unheard of till you go get it and stream it and listen to it and buy it. So it's just weird to me that the, our industry has given away our our precious gems, to, you know, which is good in a way. It builds awareness. It makes people fans. But I think it also hurts the bottom line. Uh, yeah. I mean, I can see what you're saying, um, <clears throat> you know, and maybe that works for, uh, you know, um, you know justin timberlake or somebody that's just got just so much name recognition and you know that they don't need to do anything they just they drop a record and it sells you know but for us we have to remind people that we're a band you know it's still a thing so it will always be you know we're we're still in the trenches and uh you know i i'm totally cool with that it's it's uh i like this i like the you know the grind Right on. I love what I love about the band personally is you guys have continued kind of still feel like a, a little club band to me, even though you guys have gotten bit much bigger and successful. And actually, I was going to ask about relapse because uh, I figured by now, surely someone in the majors has tried to poach the band because that's usually what happens to relapse is a lot of great bands come up through there and then they get poached uh, and you guys have stayed with them and must uh, con continue to work out well with those guys. Oh yeah, you know, and the and these checks that they keep tra you know showing up in the mail, I'm like, I'm not cashing that, you know, because because I uh, 
because I'm a man of principle. No, um, yeah, we're very happy with VLAPS and, um, uh, and, I, and I think that uh, it would be, I mean, no one is knocking down our door, uh, but, you know, major label or something, but I would be concerned that there would, the kind of moving parts that you would get with something like that, I would just be afraid that we would lose, um, you know, control of our, of our thing. And that's one of the great things about Relapse is, you know, we signed a contract with them, I don't know, 10 years ago. Uh, and, uh, you know, and basically, you know, what the tenor of the conversation was, was basically like, well, here's this contract. And, you know, we had lawyers look at it and, um, and their lawyers got happy with it and our lawyer got happy with it. And then we said, OK, so now we signed these contracts. Let's just put it in a desk drawer and never look at it again. And that is. And, you know, that's that sounds great. And the, but then you're like that. Let's see. That's the case. But it really has. And, and like I said, we've been on relapse for for a decade and we've we've never had to pull out the contract. Um, and, and that's awesome. You know, I mean, I, you know, see those guys around, uh, you know, they they have a home office in, in Portland. And, you know, we generally talk about, you know, we talk about pizza more than we do about you know, business, you know, it's, it's very, it's very laid back. And, and I, I, I really like that because we do need that, you know, we do need their, their uh, influence and stuff, you know, um, their, uh, you know, their machine to, you know, to, I think to, to, to get records out and, and get heard like we want them to be, but it, it really is. It's, it's just, it's just dudes making music, you know, on their side and ours. Or shout out to them. They've been terrific for you and uh, you them. They're one of those labels that the, an album comes out on it. It's probably awesome to buy it. And uh, they've done a great job. Your publicist, I'm a huge fan of Monica. She's done a great job with you guys. And uh, yeah, man, it's uh, where's the good pizza in Portland. When I was out there, I couldn't find any. Am I missing out? Did I go to the wrong neighborhood? Oh yeah, you're you're fucking up, man. There's so much good pizza in this town. Uh, <laughs> let's see, my favorite, um, some of my favorite pizza. There's a place called, um, oh no, a pizza, Gracie's a pizza in St. John's, which is a little bit out of uh, out of Portland proper. It's in a little town just outside of, um, like in basically North Portland. Anyway, that place is just phenomenal. It's really laid back. You know, you order at the counter. But, uh, you know, they sell, they make a certain amount of dough per day and um, they sell out, they close early. And I've been there at, they open at five. I've been there at 6.15. They've closed already because, well, the secret is out. Their pizza is amazing. It's wood fired and it's just fantastic. Um, uh, and then, well, sizzle pie um, is, I think, probably my favorite regular pizza. <laughs> you know, um, there's no sprigs of something or whatever you know what i mean you know you, you can get you know a uh, pepperoni pizza and be plenty happy it's uh they're they're doing it right uh a pizza shoals is um that, that has a really good reputation very similar to uh grace's a pizza really good that that used to be where you'd wait around the block and i fucking hate waiting for a restaurant it's like how good can it be i'm hungry it's a stupid standing on the side of, but portland for some for some reason uh they portlanders seem to like waiting in line for food it's like the the appetizer is standing on a street corner getting rained on for an hour that's not uh, generally my thing but uh but it it's it's a cultural phenomenon here i mean and maybe that happens elsewhere but i mean i i just have noticed it most most uh egregiously here in portland Good word too, egregiously. Um, yeah, yeah, man. My, I, my I, junior college. <clears throat> yes, yes. I am a junior college graduate, also, um, among other things. But uh, yeah, I'm also a pizza snob. So now I have a list to go back and refer to. I think I know sizzle pie by reputation from other cities, but not Portland. So I'll need to get there. Yeah, that's a that's a thing. Yeah, man. This record is deep and awesome. And uh, like I said, I feel like the band is still maintained. Your awesome sort of you know, your, your aura has never changed in the whole, you know, 15 plus years of the band, which as a fan, I, I just separately from this interview, I just really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I think that we just enjoy what we do and we haven't had to have any kind of like, you know, come to Jesus, like, man, what, how are we going to make it? You know, what I, should I wear those, you know, those 
you know, skinny pants. What's your, you know what I mean? We don't have to worry about any of that, which is just great. We're, so we're really lucky that way that our fans, you know, kind of accept us for who we are. It's like, you know, I, I put on my COVID-10 and I, you know, I'm not worried that people are going to poke fun at me. You know, it's like, man, we got, we're regular people, you know, and that's, and you know, that's not mind blowing, but I think it is sometimes it's hard for people to make a, to make headway in the music industry or um, any pop culture thing um, without doing some kind of wacky something or other, you know? Um, and so we've, we haven't had to do that. And so, and so thank you to the world for letting me just be me. It's great. Word. I feel like if I was around you guys all the time, you guys just probably laugh constantly and bust jokes and uh, point out absurdities. Yeah, that's pretty much, uh, you know, it's either you laugh or you cry, you know, and that we spend a lot of time in the van and it is a lot of a lot of really stupid inside jokes. I don't know if you'd laugh, but you'd be like, they sure are having fun. <laughs> nice word. And it's always good when you confuse others with your stuff that you like and it's confusing and weird and strange to others. You know, you're doing it right. Um, yeah, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> Uh, just, I like to end on a wild card question always. And so my wild card question for you, I always, I postulate a theory sometimes. And this theory that I like to share is, uh, I think there's three bands that heavy metal guys and punk guys all agree on. It's Motorhead, Misfits and Ramones. And I wanted to know if you agreed with that or if you have other bands that you think are sort of untouchable bands in that sort of, you know, style or that kind of frame. Uh, I think, yeah, I think definitely Motorhead, yeah, you nailed nailed it there um they're they are one of the best punk bands and one of the best metal bands in the same in the same way um yeah um you know i i like the ramones a lot um but i can see why you know metalheads might not put them in that camp because they are you know they're they're maybe a little too optimistic for uh for like parkour people but you know but uh but they they sure can write a catchy tune. Right on. I just think like in a sense that we all agree on them, not that the Ramones are metal or Misfits are strictly old school Misfits are not metal, but you know, just that we all agree, we can agree on them. Uh, I think is an interesting thing and a fun thing. And uh, yeah, the world is less cool without Lemmy, that's for sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. All right, here's a, here's a, here's a question for you. ELO <clears throat> or Rush? Oh man, that's so hard. Um, I grew up loving both bands. I'm old enough that I saw Xanadu with the soundtrack by ELO in the movies. Get out of here. In the movies. Oh, oh not, not live. Okay. No, not live. In the movies. I wish I saw them live. Uh, my, my, I think my brother saw them live. Um, I probably rush because I play bass and sing and I, I was a real progressive rock nerd growing up. So I probably have covered more rush and played more rush. And I've seen rush was my first big concert at like Madison Square Garden when I was 13. So uh, Power Windows Tour. So uh, ah. yeah, man, uh, probably Rush by a hair, but I do love ELO probably more than most metalheads should admit. Oh man, uh, you know, you, you <laughs> mentioned Xan Xanadu. I found a copy of that at, uh, at my local record store, Spec Records in, uh, <laughs> in Kenton and uh, found it for a dollar. And I was like, oh my God, this record is amazing. I wanna, you know how Black Flag did those shirts for my war and on the back it said side A or side B and you could like fight it out. You know, if you were the slow, you know, slow heavy guy or the super fast, I wanna, you know, slam dance guy or whatever. I wanna make a, I wish someone would make a Xanadu shirt that said side A or side B on the back because one's Olivia Newton-John and then one's ELO. And yes. they're both really, really good. They are both really good. And but the movie it, is but it, but it, but it, not good. But it, set, but it says a lot about you. You know, if yes. whether you like side A or side B. More. I think I like both. I don't know what that says about me. I don't never cared about street cred. I never had any anyway. Yeah, um, a, that's a cop out. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, uh, fair I, enough. I, I agree with you. I like both sides. Yeah, man. Why not? She was a badass, great singer. ELO is awesome, super catchy, great writers. Could have did anything. Jeff Lynn, pretty awesome. Can't complain. Great producer. Um, yeah, man. So super excited once again. Arrow's coming out on Relapse Records June 4th. Super cool to catch up with you. I didn't think I was going to laugh this much during this interview. So, uh, you know, Brian of Red Fang. Some people call you the Space Cowboy. Some people call you Maurice. I call you hilarious and smart. Thanks, man. Oh, well, thanks <laughs> for having me, man. It's nice talking to you.